In this video, you're going to learn what is the best way to develop a mobile application. I'm not going to show the easiest way or the fastest way or the difficult way or the traditional way. I'm going to share the best possible way to develop a complete full stack mobile application, not only for an Android phone, but for an iPhone as well. This is going to be more like a guideline where I'll share different ways of developing mobile applications and then I recommend best ways to develop mobile applications based on your requirements. So first, let me just tell you that who is my audience right now? My audience is non-technical people or absolute beginners who are looking to develop mobile applications, but they don't know how to write code because to write code, we are going to use AI. But in this particular video, we are not going to go in that depth where we will be like actually developing a mobile application. I'll definitely share different tips and tricks to create projects, but this is not going Going to be that kind of in-depth tutorial if you're looking for a completely beginner friendly step-by-step -step technical tutorial where i cover all of the aspects of mobile app development and i give an actual hands-on training on mobile application development i have several videos on my youtube channel i'll just leave a link to all of the videos in description so you can just find it there i've just prepared this simple presentation for you to understand that how mobile application actually work and what are the best ways to develop mobile applications so i'm going to walk you through all of these different steps and then i'll share that what are the best possible ways to develop mobile applications so before we dive deep into this video please subscribe to this youtube channel and click on that like button as well and if you're looking to outsource your mobile application project and you've got good budget you can hire me i have a whole team of developers and we can help you to develop your mobile application all right so first of all there are two methods to develop mobile applications the first one is cross-platform and the second one is native development so the default method of developing mobile applications is native mobile application so if you're looking to develop your application just for an android phone or just for an iphone only then this method is for you so let's suppose you your target audience is only Apple users or maybe only Android users. So you don't need to make like a cross-platform mobile application. You just need to make an application that only works on Apple device or maybe just on an Android device. So this is the best way to give best possible user experience to your audience because now you have built a mobile application that is developed to work only on one type of device, either on iPhone or maybe on an Android phone. But the problem here, if you just develop your application for iPhone and now you want to launch your application for Android as well. Now you need to completely recreate an entire application for Android phone. So that's a big hurdle. Not only developing a mobile application, now managing both of these applications separately. You will need two different teams to manage both of these applications. But developing applications natively, separately for Android phone, separately for an iPhone, will actually give better experience to your users. Also, here's my personal advice. If you have a brilliant app idea, and you only want paid users for your application. Your monetization strategy is only paid users. I highly recommend you developing an app for iOS users only because I have been in app business for last more than 10 years now and I have published more than 120 mobile applications mostly for Android but iPhone as well but I can tell you that Android users just do not like to pay I mean they just don't like to pay there's always going to be that top 1% 2% audience who are going to pay for your application if your application is solving a very critical issue only then Android user will pay on the other hand Apple users can actually pay for different kind of applications. They can pay more, maybe for beauty applications. They can pay for like simple photo applications as well. Like we have tried different things on Apple and it's much easier to monetize an Apple user rather than monetizing an Android user. So that's why if your aim is to just earn money, I highly, highly recommend you just developing an application for Apple. Later on, if your application gets like super viral and now you feel like you need to launch your application for Android as well. So yeah, sure, you can just like launch your application for Android as well. But developing a dedicated application just for one dedicated platform will actually save you a lot of time especially if you're a completely beginner so yeah, that's my personal advice for someone who is looking to just earn money from mobile application development but if you're someone who has a business and now you're actually developing your business application maybe this is some sort of like maybe grocery application or maybe like a car booking or car rental car hire application or maybe real estate management application or something like that so if your application is something like that where your users are actually divided in both android phones and iphones so yeah sure you can just like then build a cross-platform application what is cross-platform and how to develop cross-platform application I'm actually going to cover in just a couple of minutes. So if you have decided to develop a native application, I have a complete video on this topic where I give you very detailed step-by-step -step guideline to develop iOS applications. So, so the next way to develop mobile applications is cross-platform. Now, what is cross-platform? In cross-platform development, if you develop one application, now you can publish that application, that same application for Apple and for Android. So you just developed one application, now you can publish that one application on both Android and iOS. So in cross-platform, we got different frameworks to develop mobile applications. So for 
first of all we got react native this is probably one of the most popular one so this is react native and this is kind of like a most popular way to develop mobile applications right now because if you're a web developer are you familiar with react in any way so it is going to be easier for you to develop react native mobile applications the good thing about react native mobile applications is you can build your application once and now you can just publish that application anywhere literally anywhere you can publish that application as a desktop application on your windows store or you can just publish that application as your web application but to keep things simple and easy just focus on android and ios only so you can just build one react native application and then now you can publish that on android and on ios again there is a very detailed video about react native development in my description you can just find it there so if you're choosing react native root there is a react native framework which is called expo now expo is a react native framework that we use to develop again both cross-platform mobile applications so this is expo expo is a react native framework this is basically a layer on top of react native that helps you to create mobile applications in more easier and simpler ways actually so, so this is how it works you can simply just create an expo project by just running this command inside your terminal and after that once your project is created now maybe you can just like customize but if you want to test this project right now inside your mobile phone you can do that simply by just downloading expo mobile application so you can just go to your google play store or your own your apple app store and then you can just download this application which is called expo go now you can just download this application on your mobile phone and then after that on your computer you can just run your project that you just created in expo and now it will give you this qr code this kind of qr code now you can just scan that qr code on your mobile phone and you can directly run your application on your mobile phone this is, and this is the fastest way to build and test mobile applications but it comes with a catch what is a catch i'll tell you in a minute but first if you're interested in this method i have again a very detailed video about expo app development you can just like watch that on my youtube channel i think that video was most watched video so you can just like watch that on my youtube channel the catch with expo is its pricing so far all of the tools that we have discussed or all of the frameworks that we have discussed have no pricing at all but expo as a react native framework has a pricing plan and it becomes super difficult to manage your applications as soon as your apps actually grow of course you can start with their free plan and then you can just like enjoy the development you can just quickly build something and then you can test that application on your mobile phone easily super simple but as soon as you will publish your applications now you'll be limited to only 30 builds per month you might be thinking that these 30 builds are good enough for me what is a build by the way so a build is dot apk or dot abb file so if you have to test your mobile application whatever you just created on your project inside your project and now if you just want to like have an actual user experience rather than running your application inside your app, expo app so you need to now create an apk file to run that apk file inside your mobile phone so to do that you need to create a build there is a simple command to create a build and now you can just like test that application you can install that apk file inside your android phone by the way you cannot do that on your iphone you cannot create a build for an iphone and then test that and install that on iphone from a windows pc for that there is a sim completely sim like separate process for that so to do that you need to like have a macbook and then you need to like open your expo project or react native project inside your xcode and then you need to create a build there on your macbook but in terms of Android, you can totally create an APK file and then install that APK file on your mobile phone. Now, the horrible thing about Expo is their build time. So in the beginning, you can just like quickly start creating builds and it will be easy and simple to like go back and forth and test on your mobile phone. But after some time, that build time will actually start increasing drastically. Let me just give you an example from one of my application, which is published on Google Play Store. So that app was published on Google Play Store and now I had to like submit an update. So to submit an update on Google Play Store, I was creating this build and this build took total three hours and 34 minutes i was and i was like waiting for three hours and 34 minutes just to create a build and then test that build on my mobile phone and finally i had an error to install that build and now i had to like go back make some changes in my code base and come back and then create another build and then wait for another three hours and 34 minutes so that was just horrible so if you don't understand this is export dashboard and my project was my inside my visual studio code and i was creating that build so whenever you create a build from there it it sends it to expo dashboard and then it creates this build in here inside dashboard there is a way to create local builds as well but the easiest way is to create through their dashboard and it just takes like so much time once your app is published they just want your money they want you to subscribe to their payment plan and then charge money from you every month for your application so that's why to avoid that what i did i recreated my entire application inside flutter 
Now, what is Flutter? Flutter is another framework by Google that we can use to create mobile applications. So this is Flutter. You can just go to flutter.dev and open this website. And just like React Native, once you build an application inside Flutter, now you can publish that application for both Android and iOS. And also you can publish that application as your desktop application as well. So if you're going with cross-platform development, I highly, highly recommend you going with Flutter. Do not choose Expo. I highly, highly recommend you going with Flutter. Again, there is a very detailed video about Flutter application development on my YouTube channel. You can just go ahead and watch that video. If you're going with this route where you want to develop cross-platform application, I highly, highly, highly recommend you using Flutter. Because first of all, Flutter has got a huge community of developers. So any problem that you'll face, there'll always be a solution for that particular problem. Also, there is a huge marketplace of Flutter plugins. There's a plugin for everything on this marketplace. You can just go to pub.dev and then you can explore all all of these different packages for Flutter. So let's suppose if you're adding any new feature, there's always a plugin for that particular feature. So this makes a lot of things easier and simple for us as a developer. Also, it is much easier to create in-app purchases inside Flutter rather than inside Expo. So if you have any paid features inside your application, it is much easier to do that using Flutter rather than using with Expo. Okay, so now you're clear about basics of mobile application development, you know which framework to choose. And now once you have decided which framework you're going with, now next step is the actual development of your application. And this is a bit tricky now. There are a lot of online tools out there to develop mobile applications. Something like bold.new or lovable.dev or something like Rorc. And then there is a0.dev. There are like plenty of these online tools, the web tools basically that can help you to build mobile applications so this is bold dotting and this tool is good enough to like create web applications but when it comes to creating mobile applications this tool does allow you to create mobile applications as well but the only problem is this tool uses export to build mobile applications also the application that it will build will be very basic and I, I mean you cannot create a complex really good mobile application using bold.new i have created a video about like how you can develop mobile application inside bold.new you can just maybe watch that if you want but i highly highly recommend you not going with any of these kind of web-based AI code editors. So also if you want to develop Flutter mobile application, so it will not be possible to build a Flutter mobile application using these web-based AI code editor. There is a way to use a web-based AI code editor and then build a Flutter mobile application and that is using Firebase Studio. So Google has recently introduced this Firebase Studio. So this Firebase Studio actually allows you to build Flutter mobile applications using Firebase Studio. But again, this is very difficult way and immature way to build mobile applications. Do not go with that. I highly, highly recommend you to not go with this kind of web-based AI tools. What you need, you need native AI tools or like native AI code editors to build your application. Something like Cursor, Windsurf or Tray AI. And out of these native AI code editors, my favorite one is Cursor. But if you want to ask, my personal favorite one is this, which is Augment Code. So Augment Code is a plugin of VS Code. What is VS Code? VS Code is again an IDE, Integrated Development Environment that you can install. This is, this is VS Code that you can install on your computer and then you can use Augment Code as a third party application. And then you can enable basically AI code editor kind of like functionality inside your VS Code. So, th so this is one of my projects that I'm actually building using Augment Code inside VS Code. So this is Visual Studio Code and this is Augment Code. And to install Augment Code inside VS Code, you can just like go to your extensions and just choose Augment Code from here, install it. And now you can build literally any sort of complex applications using Augment Code. Now, why I'm recommending you Augment Code and not Cursor or Windsurf or Tray AI? The reason is, Cursor and Windsurf or Tray, Tray AI are good tools, but as soon as your project becomes complex, they just like start hallucinating. I have used Cursor for more than a year and I am using Augment Code for last almost four months now. And I just love Augment Code when it comes to like dealing with complex projects and solving the complex errors and complex problems inside your project. Augment Code just like rocks. It is really good at understanding your project and it has a huge context engine. It remembers everything about your project from start to finish. So this tool just rocks. The only catch with Augment Code is its pricing. Currently it costs you $50 per month to use Augment Code. I'm actually on another plan which is $100 per month, but now I have switched back to $50 per month because this is enough for me to like use it as my main tool. But I just like exploit this tool a lot. I run this tool on parallel to work on different projects. So if you can afford $50, sure. 
if you cannot afford $50, I think you can try their free plan. This free plan is good enough. It will give you essential features and it will like keep you going. But if you're serious about developing something, so I think you can just subscribe to their $50 plan. It, it will help you to build your project faster. So out of these AI code editors, I highly, highly recommend you going with this combination, which is VS Code plus Augment Code. So VS Code is completely free to use Augment Code will cost you again depends on you you can just like go with the free plan but if you want like better performance i recommend you maybe like subscribing for one month but in one month you can like maybe build five six different apps so choose augment code so the next thing is building your back end and your front end and using api keys so if you're going with flutter if you're like building this cross-platform application so you can just like build the, your front end using dart dart is a very unique programming language which is only used by flutter but if you're using something like ios development so you can use something like swift for your front end and back end development to develop backends and database you can use something like neon.tech and firebase now both neon.tech and firebase are free to use like absolutely free to start you can i think create unlimited number of projects you can i think create 10 projects on neon.tech for free so this is neon.tech it is absolutely free to start it allows you 10 project and it allows you 0.5 gps per project which is amazing so even if you have good enough user base you can still use neon.tech and keep using it for free and if your user base starts increasing you can maybe switch to this launch plan which will cost you minimum five dollars per month but this is again like cheapest way to build your backend the other way is using fire Base. so you can just go to console.firebase.google.com and you can just sign up for free you can create a free firebase account and you can integrate firebase inside your project absolutely for free again i have created a very detailed video about firebase and how you can create a backend for your project using firebase there are very detailed videos on my youtube channel i just leave a link in description the final thing is using api keys in most cases you need to integrate ai inside your applications and to do that you can use something like open router now, Open Router is a platform where you can actually access all of these different large language models and a lot of these large language models are here for free. So if you just like look for free, you can see you can find DeepSeek R1 for free. You can find Rika Flash 3 for free. There are a lot of like these free models. There is OpenAI GPT OSS for free as well. There is Z.AI GLM 4.5, one of the best models. Gwen 3 Coder, one of the best model. Kimi K2, one of the best model. So you can just like find all of these models absolutely for free on Open Router. But of course, there will be rate limiting after some request. You'll be rate limited. So to avoid that, you can choose maybe any of these large language models, something like DeepSeek, and then you can just like start using the paid version of this model. I think something like Quen 3 will be good enough for any sort of use case for your application. So this model will cost you only $0.2 per million input tokens and $0.8 per million input tokens, which is like super cheap. But yeah, you can integrate open router inside your project. There is very simple basic code available that you can just like copy it from here, give it to your AI code editor and ask you to integrate open router. And if you want to integrate some sort of like AI image generation models or maybe AI videos generation models, or maybe like audio generation models if you want to use those kind of models i highly highly recommend you using something like fall.ai there is another one which is called replicate but fall.ai is super simple and super cheap so you can access all of these different models on fall.ai again for each model there is this guideline given all you need to do is just copy this guideline from here and then provide that to your ai code editor and your ai code editor will integrate fall.ai so let's just quickly recall everything that we just discussed let me just give you my final best practices to build mobile applications for any platform so if you're building mobile application just to earn money go with swift go with apple just build native applications for apple you should have a macbook and you should have an iphone to test that application on your device but if you want to launch an application on both android and iphone you should go with flutter and then you can publish your application for both android and iphone in terms of code editors if you can afford choose augment code if you cannot afford go with cursor do not go with any other options just go with augment code straightforward if you cannot afford that just go with cursor and in terms of integrating image or like video generation models or like music generation models you can choose any model from fall.ai so this was it now using ai you can build any sort of application if you go with this guideline that i just provided because after developing so many applications this is the best possible way to build apps so i hope you really like this video if you have any further questions just leave your comments in the comment section and also if you want me to create any dedicated videos on any of these topics you can just let me know in the comment section as well i see you next video bye bye